Solar and wind power represent two of the most significant changes in electricity generation, but renewables are also an opportunity to rethink energy distribution. For decades, energy grids were regional or national. Now, in part because of renewables, grids can be local. Welcome to Need to Know, where we break down the latest in technology to empower you with insights for deeper research and discovery. My name is Matt, and here's what you need to know about DC microgrids. Modern power grids are characterized by enormous AC generators feeding vast, often multi-state regions through high-voltage transmission lines. When power gets close to where it'll be used, it gets stepped down to lower voltages. And finally, much of this AC power gets converted to DC to power our devices. That's what these adapters are for. Today, DC is used to power lighting, consumer electronics, and many other commonly used devices. But even with all of these electric and electronic systems using DC power, for most of history, roughly 70% of the total power load in the US was still AC, was. That began to change in 2019, and today the US power load has completely flipped. The power load that used to be about 70% AC is now roughly 70% DC. But what caused that flip? In just a few short years, the world has embraced more and more DC power loads, with some of the biggest ones being electric vehicles and HVAC equipment driven by DC motors. Meanwhile, solar and wind power are now the least expensive options for utilities. Solar is different from other energy sources not just because it's renewable, but also because it generates DC power, not AC. And while wind turbine generators put out AC power, this AC is often rectified to DC. The DC power then either charges on-site battery storage systems or goes into an inverter to be converted to grid AC voltage for transmission. So to recap, solar starts at DC and wind is rectified to DC. The majority of the power load recently switched to DC, which raises a question, if renewable power is being consumed locally, why convert it to AC just to convert it back to DC again? Why not keep it DC? There are always power losses when converting from DC to AC, and more when converting back again. DC microgrids largely avoid these losses. The potential for a more efficient energy system is the rationale for commercial DC microgrids. At the same time, the US Department of Defense is also interested in DC microgrids because it has concerns about the security of relying on national power grids. The DOD has a formal tactical microgrid standard. Take a look at this thing. This is a microgrid on wheels developed by the DOD. DC microgrids can be more power efficient and can provide higher quality power in terms of delivering power at a consistent voltage. But managing microgrids is not a simple proposition. AC distribution systems have transformers for voltage management, but in DC microgrids you must use DC to DC converters to regulate voltage levels. And that can be a challenge because DC to DC converters are more complicated and they require high performing transistors. Also, load balancing in DC distribution systems can be complex, depending on how the microgrid is configured and used. Standards for commercial DC microgrids are being created to address critical issues such as voltage ranges, power quality levels, metering accuracy, and integration with existing grids. Finally, wind and solar are intermittent energy sources. Smoothing out supply and demand will almost certainly require some sort of energy storage option. Batteries are one possibility. Alternatively, excess solar and wind power created during peak generating hours can be used to produce hydrogen, which can be converted back into electricity later. These are just two of many options. To learn more about DC microgrids, check out the article linked in the comments below. You're also welcome to browse our technical library with articles on a very wide range of subjects. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube video channel to keep up with what you need to know.